Detection of head and shoulders price patterns can be automated in Python, so you don't have to sit behind your screen all the time. Ideally, you would have a program reading the market for you and sending you phone alerts signaling market opportunities. The head and shoulders pattern is visible when we have a formation of a high followed by a higher high, then a dip in the price, then another high that is weaker than the central peak, which we will call the head. So we can see why it is called a head and shoulders pattern. And typically, the lower price movements are bouncing over a support line that is called the neckline. There might be different variations of this formation. For example, this chart shows the same head and shoulders pattern. However, the neckline is a negative slope, in which case we will call it a descending neckline. And in this video, we will explain the algorithm that can detect these patterns automatically and see how to write all of it in Python. The Jupyter Notebook file containing the source code is available for download from the link in the description of this video and our algorithm steps are the following. First we have to detect pivot points and this was explained in previous videos as well. In brief we are looking for low or high values in candles that are lower or higher than the neighboring candles. For example, we have a low that is lower than all the neighbor's values, taking let's say three candles from the right and three candles from the left of our candle of interest. Another example is right here. The lowest value of this particular candle is lower than the three candles on the right and three candles on the left. So in this case, these are low pivot points. The number of candles to consider in this type of comparisons when we are looking for pivot points, whether it's three or four neighboring candles or even more neighboring candles, is left as a variable in the code so we can experiment on because there is no perfect setup. The market tends to change and so our program's parameters. In our program, we will detect two types of pivot points. The first one I would call the strong pivot points because these points are compared to a wide range of neighbors. For example, 10 candles from the left and 10 candles from the right of the central peak. And the second type are called weak pivot points simply because they are compared to a lower number of neighbors. As you might guess, the weak pivot points are more frequent than the strong pivot points because the conditions are more likely to be found when we are comparing a central candle to a small number of neighbors. In our algorithm, every time we have a strong pivot point, we will search for weak pivots one from the left and one from the right around the central strong pivot. We will also look for the minimas, one on the left and one on the right, just like we are seeing in this example. At this point, we can start thinking of adding some parameters to improve our algorithm, like measuring the distance between the height of the strong pivot and the level of the weak pivots. The neckline is detected as a linear fit among the minimas surrounding the strong pivot position. So we can also think about the slope of the neckline depending on which type of head and shoulders formation we would like to detect. For example, if we are looking for a descending head and shoulders pattern, we can allow for negative slopes. Or if we want to detect an ascending formation, we can put a condition for a positive slope of the neckline. In our program, I kept the slope almost equal to zero for the moment so we can detect the normal head and shoulders above a certain horizontal support level. But of course, this can be changed. It's one parameter that you can experiment on if you download the program. We can also think of the ratios of the pivot distances like this first distance divided by the distance to the neckline. In other words, the head level over the shoulder level. So as you can see, this type of detections is not very simple, but at the same time, it's not impossible to achieve. And please bear in mind that there is no perfect program. So some of the formations will be detected by our algorithm and some will be simply skipped. And I believe that any program can be further improved to detect more opportunities on the market. So we will write all of this in Python and I will show you some examples of what this simple algorithm is capable of. So this is our Jupyter Notebook file. I'm not going through the details of the cell. It's simply loading the data. I'm using the same data that I have used for previous videos and cleaning the candles, which volume is equal to zero, then resetting the data frame index. Then we are defining the pivot ID function that will detect where we have pivot IDs, which candles are high pivots and which are low pivots. And this was also detailed in our previous video where we presented a program detecting triangle patterns. So at this point, we can use this function to um, detect strong pivot points for which we are using 15 candles on the left and 15 candles on the right for the comparisons with the high values and the low values. While for the short pivot points or the weak pivot points, we are looking for five candles on the left and five candles on the right only. 
and both of these data are added as new columns in our data frame. At this point, we would like to visualize our strong pivot points and the short or weak pivot points. Both of these were added into our data frame as points positions. Notice that we are putting the um, high pivot point signal above the candles and the low pivot point signals below the candles. So we are detecting both the strong pivot points and the weak pivot points adding these positions both into our data frame. This part will not be detailed here in this video because we've also used these functions in previous videos. So if you are interested in the details and the explanations regarding how these functions were made, you can check my previous videos on, on automated detection of support and resistance levels. At this point, we can choose a small slice of our data frame to plot. We will plot the um, candlesticks the open, high, low, and close prices. I'm using the plot lie package. Then I'm adding the points using the function add underscore scatter to our plot using the coordinates of the strong pivot points and the coordinates of the weak pivot points that we have computed and added into our data frame. And this is what we get at this point. We have in purple the strong pivot points. Notice that they are less frequent than the red points. We have only one, two, and three points, while the red points are more frequent because these are representing the weak pivot points. If we can see this is a head and these are the two shoulders, this was detected automatically by the program we are explaining right here. So to detect if a candle is a head and shoulders or is a part of a head and shoulders pattern, we're going to look for candle ID in the range of, let's say, the candles to be tested. Here I'm starting at candle index 12,000 up to the length of index minus the parameter, which is back candles. And the reason I used back candles is that for each pivot point, I'm looking, let's say 14 candles to the left and 14 candles to the right to check if I have two minimas and two maximas with a certain conditions that would define the pattern of a head and shoulders. So let's say this is the half width of the window in which I'll be testing for the pattern existence. If my current candle, meaning the DF I lock the candle ID dot pivot is different than two, meaning it's not a strong pivot, nor is it a weak pivot, Notice here that we're only testing for one direction of the head and shoulders. The inverted one is not detected in this function, so we have to build a different function for that. Anyway, at this point we are testing if the current candle is not a weak pivot or a strong pivot, then we can continue so we can skip this candle because it's of no interest for us at the moment. However, if we have just found a strong pivot point, we're going to record the maximas and the min. We're going to create four different arrays for the maximas and their coordinates and the minimas and their coordinates on the X axis and on the Y axis. These are empty NumPy arrays for the moment. We will also need four different variables to count the minimas and the maximas before and after one central pivot candle. So when we find a pivot candle or a pivot point, we're looking the number of back candles before that, which is 14 here. So we're looking 14 candles to the left and 14 candles to the right and checking the minimas and the maximas and counting these. And these are the counters of these minimas and maximas. So when my candle ID is a pivot point, like a strong pivot point, in this case, I'm going to test for I in range from the candle ID minus back candles up to the candle ID position plus back candles. So from the left and the right of the central candle ID, if we have a weak pivot point, which is a minima, we're going to append or add the coordinates into these NumPy arrays. So we have the height of the minima and the X, the position of the minima. At the same time, we're going to increment the counter of minima before the uh, count plus one if I is less than the candle ID. In other words, if the minima is before or on the left of the central candle, and if it's on the right of the central candle, we're going to increment the minima after the central candle. Same thing if we find a maxima, which is a weak pivot point, we're going to score the coordinates in the maxima and the xx max numpy arrays, and we're going to increment the counters of the maximas before the candle and the maximas after the central candle. The reason we are including these counters of maximas and minimas on the left and on the right of the central pivot point that we have just found is that if we find a pivot point without any of these maximas or the, or the minimas, 
without maximas or minimas at some point, then it's useless because we will not find any formation of the head and shoulders pattern. Remember that to have the head and shoulders pattern, we need this maxima to be a strong pivot point, but at the same time, we need weak pivot points on the left that are minimas, and we need two maximas, one before and one after the strong pivot point. So if the counter minima before the count is less than one or minima after the count is less than one, etc., the maximas before and the maximas after are all less than one, when we're missing one of these points for which are crucial for the formation of the head and shoulders pattern, in this case we continue, which means we jump to the next candle ID. So we're going to test another candle. If it's not the case, meaning if we have minimas before and after and maximas before and after our strong pivot point, in this case, we can fit the uh, minimas using the linear regression function into a slope. And this function will give us access to the slope of the minimas, the intercept and the correlation factor, which is R minimas. So now we can find the uh, strong pivot point index, which I called head index here within the maximas, which is the small numpy array here of the maximas. And that will also include the head, not only the weak pivot points, but also the strong pivot will be added into this uh, x, x, max and the maximas. So in order to find the head, we're going to use the um, argmax function of NumPy to search for the maximum within the maxim array. And this is where it will all happen. So these conditions will define the head and shoulders pattern. So we need that the maxima of the head index, meaning the head, minus the maxima of the head index minus one. So minus the level of the maximum that is just before the uh, head. So this level minus this level, the difference here should be greater than a certain threshold. Let's say here we have it uh, greater than 1.5, 10 to minus three. You might of course want to be more selective, in which case you can increase this value. For the moment, we are sticking with 1.5, 10 to minus three, which goes well for the Euro US dollar charts. Then at the same time, we need the maxima, meaning the level of the head, minus the level of the maxima that is right after the head, meaning on the right of the central head, right here, this maxima. The difference between these two levels should also be greater than same threshold, which is 1.5, 10 to minus three at this point. And at the same time, we need the absolute slope of the minimas, which is the support level here. You need it to be a bit horizontal, unless if you want a decreasing head and shoulders or an increasing head and shoulders, depending on which pattern you are trying to find or trying to detect in your data. So for the sake of this example, I just kept it horizontal just to see how it works. And we are putting this condition where the absolute value of the slope of the minimas is less or equal than 10 to minus four. Again, here you might want to be more selective. You can put 10 to minus five or simply equal to zero, but this will reduce the number of uh, signals that you will get, the number of cases or formations that you will be able to detect. I'm sticking only with these conditions. Of course, you can add on top of these like a certain ratio. For example, some prefer that this difference would be less than one third of the difference between the highest point here of the head and the support level or the neckline of the head and shoulders pattern. So anything can be added in these conditions. I'm sticking with simple conditions for the sake of this video. And when we run this function that's going to search for the candle ID where we have these conditions, we are getting the index 15,412. So if we go back and we plot it, 15,412, it's this particular candle right here, which is the pivot point, the highest or the strong pivot point around which we have a formation of the head and shoulders pattern. We can try and look for a different formation. Let's start instead of 12,000, let's say we are starting at zero and I'm going to run this. So we're getting index 6,369, we can go back and plot around this particular candle. So I'm plotting the slice between 6,350 and 6,390. And this is what we get. This is the um, uh, 
uh, they detected the head and shoulders pattern by our algorithm. So it is indeed, we have a head, we have two shoulders. It's not the most symmetrical formation, but it works well. And we have this support level, the slope fitting the different minima points is almost horizontal. So ideally to trade this pattern, if the price breaks down below the support level of the head and shoulders, then we have the start of a downtrend. This algorithm or these conditions can be further improved in order to be more selective and to filter those false signals if you have more time to spend on refining this uh, these two lines of this code but at this point it's providing something that is promising if you are interested in this particular pattern so this is all i had to show you for the head and shoulders video i hope you guys liked it i hope you are finding this information helpful until our next video trade safe and see you next time